The Arctic Base Camp at Davos is here for the second year because we believe that Arctic science has a lot to say to global decision makers about global risk. This year we're delighted to be at the Shadsalp Hotel and we've partnered with Christiana Figueres, the UN Global Goals, and Mission 2020 in order to bring the facts and they can bring the solutions. Being at a base camp is incredibly uplifting. It's, it's difficult work, it's tremendously hard, it's cold, but every camp I've been on has been fantastic. The real can-do attitude. And I think science and industry and all the other stakeholders have a real role to play. We work together and this base camp just grows on and grows on and goes on. We know today with overwhelming evidence that a stable Arctic and a stable Antarctic regulates the stability of the entire planet. We've lost about 50% of a summer ice cover since the late 1970s. And what we've understood is that, you know, if these changes continue, it's a real possibility we're going to see an Arctic Ocean that's ice-free in the near future. We need more observations. We need observations that span decades and, and large regions. And the way we do that in the modern era is that we build robots. Because the Arctic is warming two to three times faster than anywhere else on the planet, it's causing weather patterns around the Northern Hemisphere to slow down and to become more persistent. And this leads to many kinds of extreme events, things like droughts, longer lasting heat waves, longer flooding events, longer periods of snowfall. We've had a couple of record years recently, 2016 in that part of the Arctic was the warmest summer since meteorological records have been kept, which go back to the 1890s. What does one meter really mean globally in sea level rise? Well, it means that hundreds or millions of people will be directly affected by this. In the Arctic, we're seeing a reduction in 50% of the sea ice in summer. We've seen changes in the mass balance of glaciers. We see changes in the storm patterns. And on land, we see changes in the shrubs and the greening of the Arctic, as they say. There is a huge moral responsibility here vis-a-vis -vis nature and vis-a-vis -vis the vulnerable populations, but it is not an economic burden, it is an economic opportunity. And it's just very clear, climate change is real, it's happening now, and humans are largely responsible for it. And that means humans are largely responsible for fixing it.